I have this cooler that's been sitting in my garage for what seems to be forever. It's seen better days. It's got two busted hinges, making it pretty much useless. I could always throw it away and buy a new one for like $35, or buy a new hinge set for, say, $16. Or better yet, since I have a 3D printer, I can go ahead to Fusion 360, design a print and place hinge to fix this one, and bring new life this old cooler. Now, if you don't have Fusion and you're using it for personal use or you're a hobbyist, you can go download it through Autodesk on their website. I'm going to show step by step how I design a print and place hinge. I'll print a set and get this cooler back in service. It'll only take about 10 minutes to draw this up. I've already removed the hinge to get my dimensions from it. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. I'm going to start with laying out the basic shape of my hinge. I'm going to start with a sketch on this plane. In the center of my screen, I'm going to draw an eight millimeter circle. On each side of that, I'm going to place a rectangle. I'm going to make the distance from the center of the circle to the outside of the rectangle half of my width of my hinge. Now I don't want the vertical line here overlapping. I, I need to maintain at least one millimeter of space in there so that the hinge will be able to open and close. I know my base thickness is 2.6 millimeters. On the other side, I'm just going to use a lot of constraints. I'm going to use an Colinear or an equal constraint to make sure these lines are the same size. I want to do the same for the vertical. And I'm going to make sure that I'm collinear on the bottom. I'm going to add in the same dimensions I did before. Go from the center of the circle to the outside. I'm going to make that 58 divided by 2. I'm sorry, that's, I need 31 divided by 2. And now I need one more dimension, and that's going to be from the bottom. And I need to pick the tangent of my circle up here. And I need that to be 11.7 based off of the dimension I took from the original hinge. And that's all I need. I'm going to finish that sketch up. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude all three shapes at 58 millimeters. That is the length of my hinge. But I don't want it go in one direction. I want it go in two sides. So I'm going to take my 58 and I'm going to divide that by two. And I'm going to put that in on each side. That way my total length is 58, but I'm maintaining my center line. Now I'm going to turn this knuckle in or cylinder into four separate knuckles. I'm going to hit sketch. I'm going to pick here is my work plane. I'm going to come down and I'm going to just draw some lines. We'll, we'll do all of our cleanup with dimensions and constraints. I'm going to make those two lines 0.4 millimeters apart. I want this knuckle to be 14.3 millimeters from the end. If you can't grab an end, sometimes that happens, just come down and hit project. I'll project my geometry. Now I'm going to place a dimension from that line right here at 14.3. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle. I'm going to draw another line from the center of that circle straight up. Now I'm going to trim this circle up so I'm only left with a quarter of it. not hitting my planes here. Here we go. Now I'm going to draw another circle from the center of that same circle 
but I'm going to come up to the outside and I'm going to trim that up a little bit just to make it easier to work with. There we go. I want the radius of this first circle to be two millimeters. I want the distance to the outer circle arc to be 0.4 millimeters. Now I'm going to get rid of what I don't want to keep. I don't need that line. I don't need this up here. I don't need that line, this line. Don't need that. Don't need that. Any of that, any of that stuff in there, we don't need it. Now, that is going to be what our cut is going to be when we're done. Now I'm going to add some, actually I'm going to go with the vertical horizontal constraint. And I want those to be lined up right on the center of my arc. I want a dimension from the center of the, the cylinder to the outside edge. And I want that to be four because I, I drew my cylinder at eight millimeters. I believe I have everything in there. I want to check some constraints to make sure everything is centered. I want to make sure that these two circles are concentric to each other. Looks like everything is okay. Those lines shouldn't be blue. They should be white. I must be missing a dimension somewhere. I don't see it. I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch. I'm going to click revolve. That pattern lights up for me. It's looking for an axis. So I want to rotate it along an axis of that cylinder. So let's click that. And this line here will work for us. And there we have our socket and ball. And we need to draw that three more times, but we're lazy. I'm lazy anyway. So I'm going to hit create. I'm going to go to pattern, rectangular pattern. I'm going to make sure my object type is features. I'm going to click on the revolve down here in the bottom. I believe I have everything there. I'm going to select my axis, which is the direction you want it to go. And it's going to cut along there. I want my quantity to be three. My distance is going to be a total of 29. And I believe I might be going the wrong direction, which I am. So I'm going to make that a minus 29. And I'm going to click OK. And that's all there is to it. We have our knuckles. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a rib. And I'm going to do it right on this first knuckle. So I'm going to draw a sketch. And I'm going to start it on the back side here. I'm going to go with a line. I'm going to project a few lines. And I'm going back to my constraints. I want this point to be concentric here. And I want this diagonal line to be tangent to my arc. I'm going to trim off what I don't like. I'm going to come back and I'm going to project. Actually, I don't need to. Let's just draw a vertical line right there. I'm going to go ahead and trim that out should be good let's finish this sketch go back to our home view I'm gonna hit extrude I'm gonna select that profile my arrow is pointing in this direction but I need I want a rib coming towards me so I'm going with a negative number and I want that rib to be two millimeters and that's what we'll enter I'm also going to want to put two ribs on this knuckle right here so I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a sketch to this face I'm going to come down and click project and I'm going to click this surface right here and that's it finish sketch now I'm going to go ahead and use extrude and instead of typing a distance I'm going to hit two object and I'm going to make sure I click on this face right here and hit OK and I know that it looks like a wedge we're going to fix that let's come down 
and we're going to draw a sketch right on that surface. I'm going to add it, draw myself a little happy rectangle right here. I'm going to add the dimensions here of two millimeters. I'm going to add a dimension here instead of typing into. I'm just going to click on that dimension up there. That will make them equal with, with each other. I'm going to zoom in here and then you can see the little ball for the center of our sketch plane. I'm going to click on that and right there and I'm going to enter four since we're using a radius of four. I want a collinear constraint from here to the edge. And that's it for that sketch. One simple square. We're going to finish it off. We're going back to our home view and I'm going to hit extrude. And you notice I'm having a tough time getting in there. That's all right. We're just going to go up to inspect. We're going to hit se uh, section analysis and I'm going to click that face we just sketched on and hit OK. You see everything just cut away. I'm going back to extrude. I'm going to pick my profile. My direction is correct. My distance, I'm going to change to all and you can see how it's shown right there. We'll click OK. I'm going to turn up the analysis again over here on the left side I'm going to turn that click on the eyeball so it grays out and there you go now to make this look better I'm gonna add a fillet right here and I'm gonna go with four millimeters and that just blends it in real nice now what we got to do is the same thing to the other side But I do want to go back and make sure I round off this corner with a fillet. And that's going to be four. Makes it look a lot nicer. Next, I need to attach this knuckle of this surface. So I'm going to draw a sketch starting right here. I'm going to go ahead and project a few lines. Project this, that, and that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and draw a simple vertical line. I'm going to go ahead and use my tangent constraint right there. And you know the drill. Cut out what I don't like. I'm going to finish the sketch. That's all there is to that one. I'm going to come back and I'm going to extrude that and I'm going to change my extent type to object to the surface right here. And that's all there is to finishing off that one. We'll have to do the same thing over on this end. We'll click sketch. I'm going to project that line, that line in the circle, draw a vertical line way out here I'm going to make that line tangent with a constraint to the circle trim out what I don't need and apparently fusion servers are having issues but it doesn't affect what I'm doing so I'm going to finish this sketch out I'm going to go ahead and extrude Change my distance to this object. And that's looking like a nice little hinge. This hinge would be usable as it is right now if it had some holes. So let's do that. Let's select sketch. We're going to click on the top surface. Now I could draw circles for the holes, but what I'm going to do is use point. And I'm just going to click in the four corners or thereabouts. You see it left little white dots. I'm going to use my vertical horizontal constraints to line everything up. And this helps us with dimensioning. So I'm going to add a dimension from the outside edge to this one. And that's going to be 6.5 millimeters. I already know that because I measured and sketched at the start of this video the center distance is 45 and let's see the outside to the center of the, the 
holes will be 6.5 and the same will be true over here 6.5 millimeters and we can finish that up that was pretty easy now what we got to do is select our hole command so I'm going to select that and click on each of the four points and you can see my hole starting to show up as I'm going along and clicking them that's how you'll know if you have them I'm going to change my distance to two object flip it over and I'm going to click this surface and that's all there is to it now we have holes and while we're at it let's round these corners with a fillet I'm going to select the fillet command and I'm going to pick each of the four corners I got one in the back here I need to get and I'm going to make those five millimeters and that's looking pretty good if you ask me I'm going to add a little bit of strength right in here by adding another fillet on this edge and this edge and I'll do the same thing on the other side and I'm going to make those two millimeters if I go any more than that I risk getting into the center of the hole or into the hole not in the center but and there you go now I'm going to want to go ahead and save my hinge I'm just going to call this cooler hinge I'll save it the location cooler hinge and next we'll go ahead and we'll export that out as an STL and we'll print and see what we get I'm just finishing up replacing the second hinge Let's see how we did. Nice. It functions as advertised. I'll be back to cold drinks in no time. I hope you found this information useful and are able to apply it to repair projects that you might have laying around your house. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down below in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.